Back in 2021, I went hiking in the Eckerst Mountains, close to the border of Montenegro and Albania, and I went there with a group of my friends. I think you can already tell from the opening shots that it was an unforgettable experience. In short, we spent 7 days in the mountains, far from civilization, and in that one week of gaining altitude, we had almost reached the total height of Mount Everest. All we were allowed to take with us on this trip was backpack full of spare clothes, food and random survival items and in my case also some photography gear because I'm a photographer, right? In this video I would like to especially emphasize this part of my journey. So if you are a photographer and love hiking as much as I do, keep watching till the end. But before I get into the photography stuff, I just want to tell you a little bit about the trek itself. Our experience started with a flight from Vienna to Podgorica, but the real adventure began after we spent a night in Holstop and took a 5 hour bus ride to a small mountain village called Gusinje. Gusinje was our starting point and also our last contact with civilization before heading into the mountains. But nothing could stop us so we set off. For the first few hours we were struggling to find the right trail, but once we did we were so excited because we had successfully climbed our first peak, even though it was completely covered in fog. And then we took a short break and continued our journey over the mountain ridge, which was covered in fog again. Yeah, the weather was sometimes really challenging and often against us, but sometimes it rewarded us with such breathtaking views, like on the Bravoy Gorit section, where the fog suddenly cleared and we could enjoy a breathtaking view of the valley. This was also one of the most beautiful moments for me, because when the fog lifted, dozens, maybe hundreds of sheep suddenly started running down the hill and accompanied by the bells on their necks. It was such a special moment. Our journey sort of continued like that. We descended to the valley, the next day we climbed about 2000 meters to another peak, then we descended to the valley again and then we climbed another peak. And after we climbed the highest mountain of Montenegro and crossed the borders of Albania, we were almost killed by a bear and then we almost died again after climbing the highest peak of Albania, my ESZ. But after that, we successfully made it to Tet, which was our final destination. Tired, exhausted, out of energy, but at the same time happy, excited and proud of ourselves because we made it. That week we walked a total of about 77 kilometers and climbed about 7000 altitude meters both up and down. With a few exceptions we slept mostly in a tent in the middle of nowhere, cooked simple meals on a backpacking stove and we also drank the crystal clear natural water. It was the first time in my life that I did a hike like that and I will never forget it. It was so powerful, lots of ups and downs, a lot of scary moments, a lot of pain. But I got out of my comfort zone, I surpassed myself and I have to say that I'm looking forward to another similar hike. And that's also why I'm so glad that I documented the whole trip with my camera. So let's do the photography part now. Well, I'm the kind of guy who likes to take free zoom lenses and five another prime lenses with me everywhere I go, just in case. But before I left for Albania, I knew I had to keep it simple and minimal this time. When you go on a trek like this, your biggest limitation is probably the weight of your backpack. And if you are not a professional hiker and don't have tons of special lightweight gear, the weight of your backpack rises very quickly. Plus, you usually want to prioritize those life essential items over the camera gear. However, the camera couldn't be left at home, so I had to make a lot of compromises, but in the end, I ended up with this photography gear. Sony A7 III, my main camera that I used for everything, Tamron 17-28 f2.8, the lens I used most during the trip, Tamron 28-200 f2.8-5.6, to universal lens that covered the longer focal lens, Joby Gorilla Pod 3K, small but sturdy tripod, DJI Mini 2, a surprisingly good drone that could be packed in a lunchbox, and some accessories like batteries, power supply, SD cards, and also peak design capture, it really came in handy. And that's all, there just wasn't any more space in the backpack, and it was heavy as hell anyway. Still, I think I chose my photographic gear wisely, 
because I had a decent camera, I had the most important focal lens cupboard, I had a drawl, a small tripod and a lot of handy accessories. However, if I were to give you recommendations on what photography gear to take on a similar track, here is what I would take next time. First, take a wide-angle lens. I used my Tamron 70 to 28 the most, and when you are in the mountains, you really want to go wide and capture the vast scene areas. Second, take another lens that will cover the rest, such as the Universal 22 to 200. Even though the image quality is not perfect, it really comes in handy. Third, take at least a small tripod, something like a gorilla pod or something similar. I know it's not as sturdy as a professional tripod, but there will be times when you want to get some nice time-lapse shots and there will also be a perfect pollution-free night sky that you want to capture. And it's not too big or heavy, so you can clip it to the side of your backpack quite easily and just go. And just a little personal tip, try to not lose the ball head on the second day of your trek, otherwise your tripod will become an extra weight on your backpack that is probably based on a true story. Don't be an expert like me. Tip number 4. The Peak Design Capture Clip is a beast. Thanks to that I didn't always have to put down my backpack to take my camera out and put it back in again, but I was always ready to shoot because the camera rested securely on my chest strap and also it can help you with the lens swapping, which is really tricky when you are on the go and it's just a great gadget overall so I can recommend buying one of these. Tip number 5. Keep the weather in mind. When you are in the mountains, the weather can be really unpredictable, so be prepared that the rain can occur anytime. So either get a weather seal lens or some sort of rain cover for your camera. The next tip is don't underestimate the power of your devices, otherwise your camera will become another extra weight on your back. In my case, a power bank of around 30,000 mAh was quite enough for half of the trip, but luckily later on we came to a place with electricity, so I was able to recharge it. Nevertheless, don't underestimate the capacity of electronics, because there is nothing worse than missing a shot just because of the lack of battery power. And also one extra tip, consider swapping the troll for a decent prime lens. Sure, I love trolls, but I'm not sure if the drone was so essential and yeah, it helped us when we got a bit lost because it was getting dark and we needed a bit of guidance. But from a photography perspective, I guess it wasn't that important. DJI Mini 2 is a good draw, no doubt about it, but it does take some time to prepare and if you are on a tight schedule and you need to build your tents before sunset, it just makes things a bit complicated. Yeah, and also, and heads up, this one is damn important, don't trade camera gear for items needed for survival. I know, it's hard when you are a photographer, but your Sony A7 III will not make you dry when the rain comes, and it won't feed you when you are hungry and all the food is already eaten, so just keep that in mind. I really love mountains, and as I already said, this trip has been unforgettable. Overall, it's been quite challenging, but also a rewarding journey that pushed me out of my comfort zone and I'm looking forward to my next adventure like this. Before I had set up for this adventure, I was a bit afraid. Well, in the past, there was a case of hijacking three Czech students who were exactly in the Eckhurst Mountains for a similar hike, but hopefully the world has changed since then and now Albania seems to be a nice and friendly place. And I can definitely recommend you visiting Albania and especially the Eckhurst Mountains. You will love it, whether you enjoy hiking or you just want to take beautiful photos of an untouched nature. One last thing before I'll say bye to you, if you'd like to purchase some of my photos from Albania as prints, you can head into my print store right now, there are many pictures from Albania and also if you'd like to see the exact path of our hike, there is an article on my blog where you can find the map as well. And that's it! I hope that you liked this video and also, if you are a photographer, I hope that it gave you some valuable information. And if it did, I will be very happy if you appreciate it by hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Because about 80% of you are not subscribed to my channel, so let's change it. And if you have any questions, notes, comments, just put it in the comment section and I will meet you there. For now, thanks again for watching and see you 
at the next video.